Okay. Um, thank you all for joining us for the Los Angeles Youth Poet Laureate commencement performance. Um, this is a really uh, historic event in the city of LA. Um, this is our fifth year in partnership with Los Angeles Public Library. Um, usually we have this event in the library and this year we're doing it virtually, but we hope this finds everybody viewing um, safe and healthy. And um, the way that we like to open up events as quickly as possible because this is a poetry event and let's set the stage is open up with the poems. So it is my great pleasure to introduce uh, Demeter Appel Riel, who is the 2019, 2020 Los Angeles Youth Poet Laureate to open us up with a poem. Hey y'all, uh, I'm Demeter. My last name is Appel Riel. Uh, if, you are looking, <laughs> if you're looking me up on the internet, I don't know if it will make a difference. Um, but my poem is called On Whether or Not to Submit Poems with My New Name. When I think about my body, my blood roars. There's, so some, there's something so particularly disgusting about the way my hair falls. My eyes cut my clothing in the black light. I'm calling for a storm to suck me open, to peel back enough skin to make me feel alive again. I want to shave my head and wear a dress of barbed wire. I want to carefully construct a voicemail for everyone I have not told. I want it to come out in a voice that sounds mine. Name myself something whole enough for the ground to swallow. I lay down in a perfect field of grain and wait for the ground to split open, to usher me home to something wet and dark. I excavate my eyelashes one by one, bleach my hair with iodine and peppermint oil. I allow myself to be picked apart. I want to lay down in the center of a hot slab of pavement and offer myself up to something holy and taloned. I have had three births. The first two could not pick out my face in a crowd. The last happened in the mouth of a wolf and I've been able to taste it spit ever since. Thank you. So next up we have Candace from the Los Angeles Public Library and a big supporter of the program. Hi everyone, I'm Candace Wingy Mack and I coordinate system-wide team services at the library, which you can see a virtual version behind me of our beautiful rotunda on the second floor, which is also where our children's lit department is, our um, teen, teenscape department, youth services, and also um, art music um, rec and recreation department. So when we reopen, um, we're really excited to welcome everyone back, but I'm super excited to welcome everyone virtually too. Um, as Michael said, this is our fifth year partnering with Urban Word um, for uh, another wonderful afternoon of um, inspiration and healing, especially now. And I also wanted to wish everyone a happy pride and I can't wait to hear all of the finalists um, and all of their awesome poetry. And to find out who who the the LA Youth Poet Laureate is as well. But congratulations to everyone on making it um, this far. Thank you, Candace, who also helped to judge, um, which is not an easy task. Um, so one of the other partners who's been instrument instrumental in driving this program forward in LA is the LA County Commission uh, for Human Relations. And so we have a commissioner here to say a few words and I would just like to introduce um, Dr. Guadalupe Montano. Um, Dr. Montano is a graduate of the Women's Policy Institute as well as the Liberty Hill Commission's training program. Dr. Montano is a com community county commissioner and academic. She serves as vice president of the Los Angeles County for Human Relations Commission as well as a founding chair of its policy and advocacy committee. She chairs the Silmar Neighborhood Council's Government and Community Relations Committee and is a member of the League of Women's Voters Los Angeles Committee on Criminal Justice Reform. Her background includes experience in nonprofits and higher education, as well as work on behalf of medically underserved communities. A Valley Girl, a Bruin, and a Trojan, she seeks to connect all Los Angeles communities to local government and is an ardent Dodgers fan. Hopefully we get some baseball back soon as well. Um, so thank you for joining us, Dr. Montano. Uh, absolutely, my pleasure, thank you. Um, I'll keep it short. On behalf of the County Commission on Human Relations, I want to express our admiration of your talent, our gratitude for your willingness to share it with us. I thank the Los Angeles Public Library for hosting this event 
and I thank the leadership of Urban Word and the National Youth Poet Laureate Initiative for introducing us to the voices of these incredible young people. I also thank your families and loved ones for supporting these, these artists. I'm very much looking forward to listening and to celebrating your words. And lastly, I will say that the LA Youth Poet Laureate will be invited to open the next John Anson Ford Award Ceremony hosted by the County Board of Supervisors. I'll see you there. And congratulations to all of you. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for your partnership. And we're about to get into it. I guess I, I usually say a couple words about the program and its, and its history. I'll keep it very brief because I'm, I'm in need of some poetry myself right now. But um, the program started over a decade ago in New York City, the first of its kind, to really celebrate young writers who are at the forefront of artistic excellence and social justice and social impact. So all the poets you hear today are not only incredible poets, but they're great leaders in their community. They work on the front lines. I see pictures of them on Instagram marching. Um, so it's a really powerful group of um, young leaders who dedicate their art to social change. And so that's, that's the difference between, you know, the, the general literary arts organization and a movement here that really tries to situate poets that are on the, uh, at this intersection that is important now more than ever. Um, we've been hearing the stories that we see broadcast on the news for the past 20 years. Um, and these poets have really been the torchbearers of that. So, um, it's our goal to really bring that to the forefront now more than ever. And I'm excited um, to see this next group of young leaders um, lead that charge. So without further ado, um, Demeter Appel Riel is a 2019-2020 Los Angeles Youth Poet Laureate and a junior at Alexander Hamilton High School. They organize a monthly reading for Los Angeles youth called the Mirror Talk Collective and teach weekly classes at Art Division a nonprofit of Los Angeles. Demeter will be passing the torch today. So it's been an incredible year for Demeter and um, you know, the work doesn't stop. And if you know anything about Demeter, they do this work day in, day out with or without this title. So thank you for being our host today and I'm gonna leave it to you. Hey y'all, um, it's great to see everyone and be here. Uh, and I'm very excited for the next year. Um, because I, I, I've read y'all's bios. I know you've all done amazing work. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so our first poet is Maya Savin Miller, who is a Scholastic Art and Writing Awards Gold Key winner, a LA Service Academy Fellow, and also a Library of Congress Honor Award winner. And I'll pass it to Maya. Hello, I'm Maya Savin Miller. Um, the title of the poem I'm going to be reading is I Write My Father in Jail. And soon I will be far from here, somewhere between these freckled windows and myself, the feeling of a paperweight in my belly, shower water made heavy, made hot, made burning somewhere. I heard that pigeons can't fly high enough to reach me, but that one night in December, the sky was so heavy it carried a black boned bird to me. Wings like cigar smoke that scattered broken pieces everywhere. One on the street corner, two by the lamp post. No time to bury the myth by the tracks because the train ran you over too. Let the shards be beautiful under the headlights so maybe we can forget briefly or else give me a box of matches. Say, strike me and I'll draw a line like cutting open the belly of a deer, like halfing an avocado, like the C-section that released my brother and then me, do not enter. This zone has been subject to natural disaster. This phone call may be subject to recording. Scorched tree stomach like crumbs left over from the week before. A skeleton shrouded in scar tissue. I wonder what it would be like to grow wildflowers in the cracked pavement because here I am pressing weeds between my ankle bones and praying for the scent of fresh bread and rosemary. But there is no time for history to undo isolation. So just remember, there were shoelaces there once, and you're wrong. There is no broken zipper, no flag stained orange, no clock stuck at three. The barbed wire is not a suicide note. I promise it's just metal. 
And I think you've got the giving confused with the taking, I mean the receiving, like the soot of someone else's cigarette on your tongue, or the way the inside of an orange peel feels like bone marrow. And now I can't get the feeling of dust off my fingertips, fruit laced with dying things. Here, there are no rest stops by the interstate to bury the dead, so you blow the flies from the windowsill with quick breaths and then swallow. Try not to wake the man asleep in the attic, blue eyes scarred shut like the soft part of an elbow and the tip of a needle and a doorknob that does not turn. Try not to say I'm sorry or I lied or forgive me. Just swallow the honey and let it scratch your throat until your ragged breathing is all anyone can hear of themselves. The way you hold each word between your teeth, gently, no, but still holding, like bars on a cracked window, like an egg in the round part of a silver spoon, a meal for two minus one. I know now that it should be enough to be of a pepper grinder with earthquake in the belly. So take my hand and let them burn in my wildfire. Please burn in this wildfire. I have been burned by this wildfire. You can see it, but I was like vigorously snapping below the camera. That was amazing. Also, I just want to say, I don't know, can we get like y'all hyping each other up in the chat, please? Because I feel like everyone here is too talented to like not be recognizing that talent from each other. Um, and we're also like not in competition right now. This is fun. We're all friends. <laughs> um, yeah, so the next poet is Jonah Henry, who is a multi-talented artist and a poet and competed in the Get Lit Classic Slam. He is also a pianist, guitarist, and songwriter. I will hand it to Jonah. Hello, um, good afternoon, everybody. Happy summer. Um, I'm reading a poem that's in the burning high bun form. So if anyone isn't familiar with that, I'll briefly explain it. It's essentially um, three blocks. The first block is prose. The second block is um, prose with the blackout of the prose. And then the third block is a haiku from the blackout. So it's three different blocks and I'll like use my fingers to signal that for you. Um, but it's called Leap, written after Burning High Bun by Torin A. Greathouse and Seven Years by Lucas Graham. Once, when I was seven, I emptied mother's purse to find a quarter for the supermarket. The red leather rips like guitar strings or a boy's tongue. From the garden, father could hear a battery, cigarette butt, and rubber band wake up on the kitchen floor and raced into our house. Wrenched mother's purse from my fingers until it, too, exited my body as if a butterfly. Or, when I was seven, mother's purse was the tallest bridge in the city to leap from. Once, I traced and unfolded these lungs like a map, lay down in a bathroom stall and pavemented my mouth into boy again. Once, Father was a parachute, a fabric mother's sewing machine birthed under a flashlight. When I was 11, father cut a gash into my backpack with the car key or sandpaper. I never ask where the desert leaps into me or if I stitch it back into itself and my less mother or more needle. Once I wore a purse to a school dance and found a dozen car keys in it. Yesterday, once, I hooked my body over a bridge on the east end of town and my shoelaces were God's fabric that is somehow skybound. Once I flung a purse into traffic, cleaned off the leather's tire burns with a butter knife or bleach. That siren in my heart, mother's lullaby, this cherry red leather, her accident. Last summer, father ran over a deer or boy and we found debris of fur in the shattered headlights. I promise I am only human because I've leapt into enough brake pedals to stay. Once, father built a bridge over the house and named it a roof. Once, when I was seven, I wore a purse in the sky in secret, latched it across my shoulder as if a kite, as if a parachute. I'll never tell you why I let it go. Two. Once, I emptied mother's purse, ripped like guitar strings or a boy's father, raced into our house, my fingers 
exited my body as if a butterfly or mother's closet, tallest city to leap from. Once, a bathroom stall pavemented my mouth into boy. Once, father was a parachute, a fabric birthed flashlight. When I was 11, father cut a gash into my, with a car key or sandpaper. I never ask where the desert leaps into itself. Am I less mother or more dance? Yesterday, once, I hooked my body over a bridge and my shoelaces were God's fabric that is somehow traffic. Tire burns, siren, mother's lullaby, cherry, leather, her accident. Last summer, father ran over shattered headlights. I promise I am only enough brake pedals to stay. Once, father built a bridge and named it a purse. Sky secret, I'll never tell. Three, ripped like a boy's house, parachute, gas, God's fabric, skybound accident. Thank you. I'm gonna <laughs> unmute myself just now. God, there's not been a single bad line said today yet. Every single line so far has been a banger from everybody. Um, that's all I have to say. Y'all are amazing. Everyone is so talented. Jonah is 15 years old. That's all I have to say. <laughs> um, not to expose you. Okay. Sasha Rotko started her school's photography club and is president of the debate club and also is a state certified peer mediator. I will pass it to Sasha. Hi. Um, the poem I'm going to be reading is titled uh, Self Love Will Out. Um, no, just a poem. Um, okay. My heart is not an endless sea of warm, gooey bliss. It is a bucket, almost empty and filled only by fragile wisps of paper-thin love trickling from between the shingles of a roof I never fixed on this old house that is my body, on this ramshackle door to my abyss. My heart cannot be broken, for there isn't much to break. A drowning man's last breaths, a splintered window pane, strung together by spare threads of twine, brittle as falling flakes, of snow or maybe ashes, to me they are the same. Love, that dainty thing of mine, isn't enough to spread. It is a wing wrapped around me, and those I will befriend can gather round the waning embers of my love until they mend, but your words douse that fire, and the wing protects only them. My heart is not a free-for-all, it isn't for every one, to take it when you want it and leave it when you're done. It is not a tool inside your armory, not a game to play just for fun. My heart won't stop loving, though that job is never done. My heart was never really mine. Those I love will steal a piece. Then those embers flicker out and my buckets got a leak. There isn't enough to hand out like flyers, only for one or two or three. But there is one thing for certain, that my love is first for me. Thank you. Hey, your rhyme scheme was so good. Love it. Okay. So the next poet is Sophie Rosenblum, who is an honor student, cellist, member of Right Girl, and Scholastic Arts Gold Key winner. I'll pass it to Sophie. Hi, everyone. I'm Sophie, and I'm going to be reading a poem called Angel Friend. We're in math class, half doing math, and you ask if I have an angel friend. Tables topple, math becomes soup, and school becomes clarity because I do, in fact. She's perfect. My angel friend paints her wings invisible so not to draw attention, flutters over finish lines, whispering a faint congratulations to the person on her left. My angel friend is thank you cards and mechanical scrawl, meticulous sentences that course down trails, ensuring first place with sweet water wording encased in vivid blue type. So we're in math class, half doing math, and you say, your angels and all honors, varsity basketball, UCLA internship, trilingual superstar. That's nice. She and my angel can talk in heaven, but deep down I know mine will be thinking about which questions to ask yours, and she'll give her everything and not give herself enough. Maybe she isn't perfect, but only such perfection can prompt the question my angel implies. Are her wings worn down? by willingness or lack thereof. Because after math class, a quick call turns into fragments. Was it a fickle friendship, feigned interest? Because all I see is my angel placed in white, her heavenly uniform, enforced now by sterilized sheets and a blue band saying, you cannot leave. 
Her eating disorder was stealthy. It hid behind wispy hair and unabashed brilliance, found solace and speed and agility and fooled the mortals into thinking that she was fine, that it was fine to eat five grapes, three cherry tomatoes and a slice of turkey a day, drink water while your friends walk to the boba place and pretend you ate before because lies are only bad when they hurt other people. And this one was hurting yourself, but that wasn't new and you'd already gotten so good at it. How did I not see the indentation by your temples? The staggering jawline and swimming clothes from seventh grade that you never grew out of, a creature not built from performance, but from deprivation. I wish I could help my angel like a math problem. Let hunger be tangent to the trust in herself to eat again, the ratios of sine to cosine. I want her pain to be logarithmic because then I wouldn't have to do the math. I would solve it over and over again until there was no other answer. You speak about math so beautifully. You almost made me like math. <laughs> um, okay, so the next poet is Micah Judge, um, who has been a pandemic relief food bank worker, a tutor, and a member of the LA Orchestra. Sorry, there is more to the bio. Um, and he was a YPL finalist in 2018 and a horn player and is a rabbit owner. And I stand his rabbits. <laughs> Pass it to Micah. Hi, I'm Mika. Um, this is, uh, I wrote this poem yesterday. It's called uh, The Naive Coyote. The coyote is coming down the street again. We are all standing barefoot on our porches to admire him in all his pathetic glory and to warn him away in fear. The coyote is coming down the street again in broad daylight, ancient and rare. And he walks on the sidewalk like us and only pauses when the Schultes dogs bark furiously at him, like they're speaking a, speaking a language he almost understands. He is scraped bald by mange. His ribs roll against his skin. He is way too hungry to be trusted. The coyote stops in my driveway and lies down and I'm almost flattered. But it's strange. How can he rest? Doesn't he feel our stares? Doesn't the pity and fear go both ways? He treats us like an extension of his habitat, the mountains he came from, and we, on our concrete porches, are almost offended. He is far more comfortable and trusting than any of us. I should not let him rest in front of my house. The neighbors will not like it if I am soft with him. And I have pets too, so even though his proud tread is tired, I step off my porch towards him. He gets up quickly, politely, sorry, and no one has ever been close enough to see his eyes, but as he retreats, he keeps looking back at me, seeming to ask, why are you doing this? What have I done? Like he is just an extension of the neighbors I already have. I go back into my house. When we find him curled up and dead next to the Schulte's house the next week, I will be even sorrier than I am now. All of us, in a small way, will come away from his shut-eyed body apologetic regretting his final days. We will check our hands for blood, feeling responsible in some way, and the next time a spider crawls into our houses, we hesitate. We think about what it is to take a life again. We release the spiders outside. We are trying to trust as deeply and as easily as our coyote. This is his eulogy. For now though, we are just tired of the heat and the preemptive guilt. We go back into our houses and the coyote, embarrassed at being mistrusted by his own neighbors, understands the barking of dogs and the silence of humans as rejection. And none of us were ever close enough to see this, but he looks north and the mountains, impossibly distant, are reflected clearly in his eyes. Everyone's storytelling today is fantastic. I feel like I can see all of your poems and I love it. Okay. The next poet is Stella Aldrich, who is an honor roll student who won a bronze medal from the California Scholarship Federation and also is a tutor and does homeless outreach. I'll pass it to Stella. Hello, uh, my poem is called He Who Bore the Sky. Don't jump. The night was neon dark, a type of sky I've only seen in LA, where the stars are watching, but the horizon's edges are tinted green by miles of light pollution. Neon dark, when shadows come out to play, 
my shadows and your shadows twirling together, gripping highlighters like I grip my own hands, sometimes leaving little red crescents behind. Don't jump, I wasn't intending to. Yet they still yell. Their words, rich purple against the soured sky, picked me up as I peered over the edge. Instead of the typical trails and overgrown trees, I saw you swimming upstream, desperately clawing back into my memory. Your pockets were full of river rock, smooth to the touch. They thudded one by one into my waiting palms. Oh, Atlas, if I could only relieve you of your burden, if I could only shatter the sky like the shell of a newly laid egg, imagine the shards of cerulean china perforating the supple earth, a dense forest of sky among the living. Our lineaments would be coated in azure dust. The, so the tides would wash upon sea-hued sand. I kissed the ground and left behind a spattering of stars. Atlas, the sky has turned green, but I still search for you nightly, just to hold your burden for a while. Thank you. Love that. The next poet is Hila Itami, who is a Right Girl member and won the President's Award for Educational Excellence and volunteers at the American Cancer Society. Hi, my, hi I'm Hila, and the title of my poem is Dehumanized. It was an accident. A man was shot. What was the accident? The killing? We thought he was a criminal. The shooting was justified, better safe than sorry, right? One life taken, one life eaten by a bullet. What's the harm with another dead body? Just a body, not a, a soul, not a complex being with emotions and treasured loved ones. Not human, just a walking corpse. One man's assumption is another man's end. When will I not be looked at as a mal malevolent creature? When will I be a human in your eyes? Thank you. Sorry, forgot to unmute myself. Big brain moment. That was fantastic. Thank you so much. Uh, the next poet is Felicity Phelan, who is a lifelong writer and 2018 NSLIY scholarship <laughs> recipient. At Harvard Westlake, Felicity participates in the school's Gender and Sexuality Awareness Club, Spoken Word Team, and Improv Troupe. Hi, yeah. Uh, my name is Felicity Phelan, um, and I'll be performing Private Property. This year, I build a home for my body. I'm thinking one of those nice Spanish style ones, you know, with the smooth white walls and the courtyards and the ripe round oranges teetering on the limp wrists of trees. Because she deserves it, you know? Because the house is my apology, is my bouquet of pink carnations, is my we, we're 10 years old when we learned men with gray beards and hard eyes would mistake our childlike roundness for fecundity, for asking for it. And how my solution to this problem was to gouge the lushness out of you is my apology for thinking that to be no curves, all sharp edges was to be unassailable. There was any way to make us a weapon they would not want to hold. I think a beachfront property is worth looking into, if only to serve as a reminder that the way she swells after meals is no defilement, but mere mimicry of moon bold ocean. And that nights spent fetal on bathroom linoleum are not a too tight dress you wear forever, just the crests of passing waves. She'll take guests most evenings, not just anyone, of course, not the man in the airport or the one from the museum or the ones who speed down cold water shouting from their cars, but her grandmother who makes the best pork buns she's ever had, who smiles and says, wow, did you lose weight every time she sees her because femininity allows for no other translation for you are so beautiful to me. This year, 
I give my body everything she could ask for. Lots of dogs, walk-in closet, swimming pool, but more important than what she will have is what she won't. No watchful eye of her mother wondering if she really needs all those carbs. No emasculated boyfriend decrying her size. No squeezing through tiny gaps between walls and tables. No apologies for the inconvenience of her motion or her presence. No fucking Brandy Melville. And no me, having starved and sliced and scorned her, I deserve no custody. Though I hold out hope for a postcard, her lounging poolside stomach overflowing from a cherry red bikini and on the back, two words in our hand, private property. Thank you. That was fantastic. The next poet is Mac Foreman, who is a filmmaker, speech and debate champion, and a get lit player, who has also performed at the LA Festival of Books. Hello, everyone. Um, my poem is entitled Wasteland Legacy. My family is well versed in passive aggressive prayer in crucifying the native slurred speech, the accent of fishing boats and smoked salmon woodworkers becoming wordsmiths out of necessity. We are a bloodline of negligence. Out of sight, out of mind, guilt deferred to other raging trigger fingers, vulnerability tastes like perverted religion, like Nuns rolling tobacco with nicotine teeth in back alleyways. Priests will bless you in conformity. In the name of the Father, they will dress you to their expectations. Learn to live in the allowable. My family could write the handbook on repeating your mistakes and becoming your parents. Title it Life and Legacy. The only traditions that I know are how to break them. Drag around a dead horse, introduce it to all of your friends, scream at the man quoting Leviticus, gather up all of your tragedies and force feed them to God. When he spits, they choke it down. Life saddled you with a hand. It's a lousy dealer. To cheat time, get a better poker face. Survival will have you circling your issues. Breaking tradition isn't always meant to have a happy ending. Sometimes you take the trash out and burn it. Thank you. I never know how to clap because it's like silent, but I'm like, I'm always clapping in my heart. The next poem is James, poem, poet, who is also a poem, is James Johnson Brown, who is a student, varsity rower, and volunteer with the National Bailout. He is also a Get Lit Classic Slam finalist with Harvard Westlake. Heyo. Um, oh boy, I don't know how to follow that. That was just amazing. Um, all right, my poem is entitled Stone Cold. I have finally procured the abs you said you didn't care about, but which you clearly longed to trace, sculpt out of my gut of clay, spin on a potter's wheel until my angles and edges matched your perfection. Daily, I dipped myself in glaze, attempted your aspirations, my chest china blue, my torso tiled cobblestone, my legs are vases. Terracotta, trimmed and tooled, there is no place that does not see you earthenware, emancipated into ears, elbows, up to bicep, tricep, deltoid, collarbone, clear as crystal, carotid. 
These arteries and veins that you have summoned to my sanded smooth surface beat for you. These lungs of stone breathe for you. This heart of sand seeds at you. I am the monolithic mountain, mounted by your ways and unwarranted whispers, twisted to clothes, corded from my distorted corpulence. I cover rippled shoulders hung low in your promises. I hide wide in thighs in your malignant commitment. I am canyon. Worn away by bloodied river, I am island birthed in bubbling mother mantle. I am cleaved from cliff face, crumbling to crevasse without curve, filled from formless to red figure, wedged to Greek hero on the side of these amphorae, Hellenistic Hercules. Alexander, Caesar, Augustus, Apollo. You had a sculptor's eye, desire chipping away at my mountain of flesh amalgamation of organs until all I was left with was the idea of a body, the skin and bones and lean mean ideal of a body. You took everything but this idyllic body. My skin is porcelain, my figure proportioned. I am plaza level perfect. I have carved my carcass to your categorical canon of design. I suit your statute of statuesque, I'm picturesque, everything Michelangelo's David could wish for. And yet, I can't help but laugh as I run my fingers along the grooves you demanded. I am your crude, carbon-condensed, jagged, diamond, rough-hewn facet boy lawless under a jeweler's high-minded monocle. And you can't even bear to look at me. Thank you. You know, I accidentally said you were a poem and not a poet, but I was right because you bodied that. The next poet is Hannah Sadi Klein, who is a member of 826 LA and Right Girl, who also won the Governor's Medal from the California Arts Scholars Program. Hi, I'm Hannah Sadi Klein. This is a poem about my mother's family history, the story of how and why they left their home, as well as how I fit into that intricate narrative. Revolution. Uprooting my family, you sent them west, their roots still caked in dirt. Five hundred people you locked inside and burned. The red hot embers still flicker in the twilight, their eyes pleading to the watchers below who bothered to remember. The Shah who let them draw blood from your earthly chambers, who let them take the fire from your veins, they watch, unmoved, mute. Tehran, in your heart, housed my legacy, the balcony where my mom kept her sheep on mute, echoing his cries for freedom. As white linens drying in the sun surrendered their iron rails to fall in a sullied heap. Repressed between bathroom walls, their mirrors cracked showing billowing skirts in untied hijabs that flit like shadows in the sun. The poet who ripped apart the seams of your corruption, leaking the air you stifled behind prison bars, hot irons you placed upon his back until skin burned red, refusing to speak his country's secrets. But words never cost so much now that they're written in blood instead of ink. I want to touch your face, feel your breath hot against my hand, but I cannot. Your eyes sewn shut, hidden gold, tarnished. The Caspian Sea, now all dried up of memories, its blue waves that lapped against the shore, washing up the golden flakes of youth mixed with ashes, still salty with blood. A movie theater burning, 500 people trapped inside. I am afraid of this fire. It burns too quickly and too hot. The flames are tongues flashing a pretense of news upon the screen. 
you took 52 trees from the West and kept them planted for over a year, deprived of water, of sunlight. You kept them hostage and now I pay for it. A crude message vandalized my parents' car. Go home. What home, I ask. This is my home, a home forced upon me, land of the free. Unless I want to return to the place where in a movie theater, 500 people burned. With them, my home away from me. Thank you. That poem gave me chills. All right, the next poet is Turn Dot Shy again who founded an after-school organization called Inkshed to introduce arts to schools with limited resources, and has also won five gold medals from Scholastic Arts Awards. Her work has appeared in several literary magazines and has been recognized by the Scholastic Awards. This year, she placed second in the Get Lit Classic Slam on the Harvard Westlake team. Hi guys, um, my poem is called America Baby. Baby, I am arch and dirt town. I am town town. This body for worship, eat up. Baby, I want to be you. I want to unpeel my mango flesh hot and charred. I want to eat myself in honey barbecue. I want to manifest, manifest, manifest. Baby. I want to be you. I want to buy supermarket graves on sale. I want to be the sale. I want to be the grave. I want to be 99 cents for free. Baby, I want to sell flesh on flesh on flesh and find out it's mine hot and cold stockroom pounds of me. I want to shovel it down, down. I want to scrub the blood back into my skin, baby. I want to be you and beautiful. I want to be you and holy. I want to cut the edges off my arteries. I want to cut the edges off my sterile mother. I want to cut the edges off my eyes so I don't have to fucking see you anymore. But baby, I want to be you. Baby, take those embryos out of your incisors. Your mouth is not a womb. You are not an oven. You are not an underneath. You are not anything more than less. Baby, you are I am a brick wall. I'm a fallen angel halo liquidized to pay for rent. Baby, you are I am you baby i am the knot and the hangman and the hang and the until him the dead baby i want to give you the shears and the paper skin i want to be a snowflake i want to be you baby I want to cleave, 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 and find me in pieces. I want to snort genocide and gerrymander ovaries. So many fucking ovaries. I want to make and break whores, baby. I have dreams of my birth and my burial under your skin. I have dreams of reborn and retorn. I want to skin myself and call it history. I want to chew myself and call it peace. I want to sort my blood and call it culture, call it ownership, call it mine. Baby, I want to cut myself into your creases. I want to be everything. I want to be you. Baby, I want to be you and God. Who's it? What's it to you? Baby, sweet baby, soft baby, blood baby, 
America, baby, my baby. Thank you. Your images are so inventive. Love them. Right. Arlene Campa is a MOCA teen, an ACLU Arts Justice Fellow, and a Create CA student ambassador who recently founded their own nonprofit called The Art Hour that teaches free virtual art lessons to K through 12 students. Hello, that's me. Um, so uh, recently, the only thing that has been keeping me sane has been the group chat. And uh, it's the only thing I pledge allegiance to. So uh, here's in lieu of the group text, I'd like to say after Dana Smith. Our hearts have teeth and we stain our gums saturated eating strawberries all summer long. And our skin is one large sock and there is solace and undoing shame together. And don't forget snap peas and forgiveness or forgetfulness. Call me by my chosen name, Mika, Bridget, Arnie, an unbound family and a scout full of marigolds, the language of flowers and all the churros we could ever ask for, plus our palms face up and black tea leaves soaked in honey, and a handful of goose fat for an abundance of feasts, and Venus is visible this week. Have you looked at your reflection? And if we all spoke the same language, would I still be able to hear you all 2,637 and 390 miles away? Thank you. Love that. That poem made me feel so warm. I was like, oh, I miss my friends. <laughs> okay, we have one more poet, and that is Ariel S. Davis, who, in, who is an honor student, a right girl, bo bold leader member, sorry, cannot speak, and president of the Arts and Culture Club and a published poet. Hi, I'm Ariel, and um, my poem is American Consumption. I am invited to dinner. I take my seat among the rest, along the never-ending table. I come in all my fineries, prepared to dine with sophistication, elegance, and pride. The table is too long for me to see everyone seated. I wonder how everyone will be served. The table never ceases. I want everyone to be served. I look at those around me. A man sits across from me, slowly opening and closing his mouth. His eyes are sewn shut. It seems as though he is trying to speak, but can't. On the plate in front of him is a book, old and worn. Are they mocking him? Who serves a book to a blind man? To the left of the blind man is a being covered in a patchwork quilt. Each square is an image. One, an insignia of a university. Another, a piece of bread. Another, a rudimentary drawing of a nuclear family. What stands out the most are the patches that spell out D-R-E-A-M in bright red, white, and blue letters. No one can see his identity. It frightens me. On their plate is loose money, bills of varying amounts. To the right of the blind man is a thin boy. Although his skin is brown, it seems to have darkened from being out in the sun. From time to time, he would whimper, donde esta mi mamá? And look around sporadically. Poor boy, at least he had the coveted gift of being invited to dinner. He should stop talking. He should be a polite guest. From time to time, he plays with a small card that has the letters V, I, S. He flipped it over. It fell on the floor. The boy stooped down to pick it up. The boy didn't come back up from underneath the table. I'm suddenly overwhelmed with warmth and the smell of dirt. A fat Caucasian woman sits down on my left. Her pink face is pinched into a frown and she is sweating uncontrollably. Being taller than me, she looks down at me with her squinty eyes. I can't believe I'm seated next to someone like you, she says, slightly spitting. I can't do anything. On her plate is a massive portion of collard greens, fried chicken, macaroni and cheese, black eyed peas, yams, cornbread, and more. 
She rudely begins eating before everyone has arrived. There's so much food on the plate, she must use a pitchfork to eat. Another person arrives and sits down on my right. This time, it is a man in a suit. I'm glad to see I wasn't the only one who felt the need to dress well. The man strangely gives a slight wave to the being under the quilt and even smiles in their direction. Since he appeared friendly, I decided to say hello. Oh, sweetheart, you have been cursed twice. You and I will never be on the same level, he replies. I roll my eyes at his yellow wispy hair and orange skin. The entitled man proceeds to eat a steak composed of human bodies. He makes each slice with the American flag. Finally, I turn to my own plate to see a pile of cotton balls and a gun on the side. Should I eat the cotton because everyone else is eating? I don't wanna be rude. I'm not sure what to do with the gun. Maybe the entitled man will know. I turn to the man. He's eating steadily. I won't interrupt him. No one will. I take my fork and knife in hand. I pick up a simple lifeless white ball that somehow caged half the population, somehow mutilated generations history, somehow despite being white, left a blight on our ideal society. I empty the cage of the, of the gun and pick up a bullet. I swallow, heat fills my throat. The little brown girl in all her fineries consumes with all the rest. The meal is so sharp, it brings tears to her eyes. The poor girl's mouth bleeds, but she won't stop eating. I don't want to lose my seat at the table. Wow. Thank you, Ariel. What an incredible way to uh, conclude our event. Very timely and powerful. Um, thank you all. Shouts to all of the poets who performed today. We heard 14 of the top young poets and leaders and activists in Los Angeles County. And I'm grateful for you all. Um, the national movement is grateful for you all. LA is definitely one of the shining stars in that movement for you poet laureate programs. Um, the time has come to really pass the torch and we'd like to close this event with Demeter sharing a piece. And while they're reading, I will text Demeter the second runner up, the runner up and the 2020-21 Youth Poet Laureate so that they can share that at the end. And um, yeah, and, and it's another year of Youth Poet Laureate. I was actually going through the, the years and this is actually the seventh Los Angeles Youth Poet Laureate. So today we'll, we will be naming the seventh Los Angeles uh, Youth Poet Laureate representing the whole county. So. Thank you all. And without further ado, um, I'm going to give it over to the 2019-2020 Los Angeles Youth Poet Laureate. Oh, wait. First, and, and Demeter also made an incredible co short collection for us. That's an excerpt from their, their poetry collection. And this will be available on the Youth Poet Laureate website. We're going to try to figure out how to get it on the LA Public Library list. So just look out for that Youth Poet laureate.org and um and this is a phenomenal collection i just printed it out it's a principal pdf the poems are fire sorry demeter it's all yours thank you so much um yeah that collection will be available it's an excerpt of a larger collection that i'm releasing independently later on in the year um it doesn't cost any money but if you're like i want to pay this artist for their work um Donate your money. Open your wallets and donate your money. Um, that's all I have to say. My poem is also about friendship and it's called Fingers Crossed Your Phone Survives This Love. My friends hold me with hands like stars. So a heart line across the country, bury it in. Uh, you got this in the group chat. No, really, have a bite of my food on the lunch break. Here, let me pull up your birth chart. Did you know all Cancer Rising's mouths look the same? Whisper care into every breath like honeysuckle, from the passenger seat in a car on the 405 to a text thread with a home still in Iowa. I want my fire to be soft enough to fit in a forever stamp, to package for them and send across the country to soothe the scalding headline, a bitter evening, 
to cup the grief I cannot ladle out of my own stomach, to write one good poem for every heartbeat I can hear in the other room, when it's too hard to write of anything else but the click of pipes turning on and a roaring wave in sorrow, when hope goes out like a limelight and my mind goes out for a walk so long I think it may never come back. I remember the sweetness still warm enough to survive this year, a promise to drink more water, listen to more music, sing louder. Thank you. Okay, so I have the finalists. So I'm gonna list from second runner up forward. The second runner up is Felicity Phelan. The runner up is Turn Dot Shea again. And the 2020 to 2021 Los Angeles Youth Poet Laureate is Arlene Campo. <laughs> Arlene, congrats. Um, you want to say a couple of words? I think, were you runner up last year, Arlene? No. I, was not. I feel like you're like close every year, so congratulations. <laughs> the floor is yours. Uh, I just got the chat that said the host has asked you to unmute your mic, and so I got scared and I was like, I don't know. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Everybody was really amazing this year and for the past couple years that I've been participating in this program. And I think it's just so great the way that we come together and foster creativity and, and love and light and treat each other with so much compassion. This chat was like blowing up uh, the entire time. Um, so thank you so much. And I look forward for the year to come. Awesome. Well, thank you everyone who's tuning in at home. Um, thank you to Los Angeles Public Library, Candace, Madeline, Neal, and everyone else on the team there. Everyone from the County of Human uh, the Commission for Human Relations in Los Angeles and all the literary orgs across LA from Get Lit to 826 to Write Girl. Um, Urban Word is the host of the Youth Poet Laureate program. This year we're going to um, share the work of our laureates on the youthlaureate.org website so you can see the meters work there as well. We're going to get that up this week and you will see more from Arlene and the others um, in the coming months. So everyone, please be safe out there. Um, thank you very much and support Youth Voice. We appreciate you and um, thank you.